Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Omega channel for day 1133 of our daily content grind. Today we are going to be focusing on a very specific release that a lot of people were caught off guard by, including me. Uh, you're looking at it on screen right now, if you have not caught a previous news video where we talked about this. Yeah, they are making an officially licensed Naruto Transformer. Uh, you see Kurama and the frog I can't remember the name of offhand. I will admit, um, I only poked my head every now and then into Naruto to see what was going on, and then when I found out everything pretty much ended the way they said they, it was going to end, uh, you know, the in, in like the first two episodes, I kind of went, you yeah, okay, okay, there's probably no reason for me to like watch the whole thing to see the twists and turns, because I, because like there's... There's nothing that makes me go, wow, how did it turn out like this? Naruto wanted to be Hokage. He got to be Hokage. Sakura wanted to get with Sasuke. That's what happened, even though it didn't seem to make much writing sense from what I saw. Point being, point being, I'm going off on a tangent. Point being, it opens up a direction of uh, Transformers uh, collaboration figures that I had never considered before, because this is kind of wild that we just have an anime character because like I, I assumed Hasbro I assumed Hasbro would keep it because like the, the vibe of uh, collaboration for a long time was tra uh, like properties that kind of grew up alongside Transformers right you know they were kind of side by side so you know Ghostbusters made sense they're both big 80s franchises Back to the Future made sense Everyone wanted a transforming DeLorean for the longest time. You know, Ninja Turtles made sense. You know, though, you know, those are two of the biggest boys toy brands of all time, you know. So it always seemed like stuff that was parallel to Transformers with like the occasional weird diversion into, you know, X-Men or, you know, what you know, or uh Tonka. <laughs> that was a thing. But anime opens it up to a completely different world of Eastern media that we never really discuss and we never really talk about when it comes to collaborative stuff because it's such a different direction. Now, the figure itself, if you didn't see it on the news roundup, does look really, really impressive. You know, uh, you know, it's a very, very good rendering of Karama, turns into a version of Naruto. I mean, it's a, a pretty ideal situation it's a pretty ideal figure and i also love the fact that this is technically the first time we've ever gotten a fox transformer 40 years here's the first one and it's naruto but this does get me thinking we need to look at what else we can do we need to see what else in anime would make for great collaborative figures that would be fun to do. I think the first one you jump to, because it's potentially like the biggest anime of all time, is Dragon Ball. And that does present options, but surprisingly few of them if you take it in the same direction as this, you know? If we base it on animal characters, for instance, Naruto kind of runs the gambit on those for like modern anime. But Dragon Ball's got Shenron. I will admit, very difficult to engineer because it's serpentine. But we have seen serpentine designs in Transformers. We do have two snakes. Uh, also, if we really want to go there, um, you could dig out uh, the old, uh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember the name of, the na of it, but dinosaurs. Uh, you know, that translucent fossil and uh, chrome uh, toy line of dino figures that tried to ape Beast Wars back in the day. Those exist. There is a serpentine dragon in there. You technically could copy the design to make that work. I mean, kind of. If you if you've seen how it's engineered, uh, Giganto Dragon, I think. Um, if you've seen how that's engineered, it wouldn't work for Shenron. You could come up with an approximation, but it wouldn't quite work. You could come up with something, but it'd be part formery, I think. So I started thinking out like, what other animals do we have? Because to be fair, if I look at like the major animes, so many of them have like animal mascots, but nothing that would really work as like a transforming figure, you know, like Luna from Sailor Moon, you know, you know, Ryo Oki from Tenchi Muyo or, you know, like, uh, like just little 
weird random characters that like they make good mascots but i don't think you could get a transforming robot out of them necessarily um i have to go to things like kilala from inuyasha who again you'd be breaking out cheetor or tigatron for this one as well it'd be cool it's a really cool design you know and it's a you know and you know uh kilala was pretty prominent in the show so it makes absolute sense granted not the most recent of animes. There's Yashahime. There's the you know the modern sequel. Okay, so okay that does bring up a little bit more relevance. Maybe not enough to make a crossover. And that's the thing is like it has to be major major anime stuff, right? You know, I could go obscure. Like I could go to like, oh well, maybe the, maybe the ships from Outlaw Star. But you have to know '90s Toonami to know you know uh, or, you know '90s and 2000s Toonami to know Outlaw Star. This is where we start dating my anime preferences because <laughs> it's all 90s and 2000s stuff because it's been hard for me to keep up with since then. And that's why I end up with things like, you know, uh, you know, uh, Kiro from uh, Card Captor as well. And again, cool design works for a Transformer. I don't know. Um, I don't. Again, I guess you're using Cheetor again. We need to get off the quadrupeds. I need to get this off the quadrupeds. Who else do we got? Who else do we got? Totoro would be hysterical. And if you want to get... Not just like the action animes. We can get Miyazaki in there as well. Though that would probably be crazy expensive. Uh, Miyazaki licensed stuff last I checked. Not the cheapest thing in the world. So to combine that with a transforming element to it. That would get expensive. Um, we're also getting into the realm of new molds here. Um, the... the the screenshot does bring up the other one, which is the cat bus. That is a potential as well. Ironically, collaborative anime is how we get our first Fox Transformer. What if that's how we get our first bus Transformer? <laughs> and it's cat bus. You'd buy it. I'd buy it. I'd buy it for the hysterity of it alone. Uh, but that is a nice transition into something that would fit Transformers a lot better, which would be vehicular. And if we're talking iconic vehicles of anime, I know the first thing a lot of you are going to jump to is Kaneda's bike from Akira. How many animes, how many TV shows in general have you seen duplicate the slide from this bike? It's iconic. It's legendary at this point. Everyone has done it. Pokemon did it. So this one is, again... A, gr a good choice and this one you could actually see like i could absolutely see the recent animated prowl being retooled into this one you know we've got no shortage of motorcycle transformers uh to work with on this one like i could even see like bumblebee rc would even potentially work uh with a little bit of re-engineering re and re rearrangement <clears throat> but yeah this is an easy one to predict this is an easy one to potentially have you know, go the extra mile and, like, make a little robot, Kane you know, Kaneda that turns into, like, like almost like Power Master Prime style. Just, like, chunk him up and, like, slot him into the body. That's getting into whole new mold territory, but it'd be funny. And then I start thinking, okay, other vehicles. Because there are a lot of popular vehicles in animes that have been legendary over the years. Uh, the Swordfish 2 from Cowboy Bebop. You're going to get anything Cowboy Bebop to sell. You know, there that's not going to be an issue. Aside from the fact it's just a cool looking ship, you know, it's a very popular franchise. Always has been. This is one I could absolutely see being done. You know, when we talk about uh, anime that could be popular enough to actually get a licensed Transformer to sell, this one is potentially, you know, up there. Even though it's like a one season, 26 episode series. It's just one of those shows that endures. It's the show you show to people who aren't into anime to kind of show them, hey, this is what anime is. It's not all magical girls and big boobed pervert, you know, you know, pervert material. There's actual really cool stuff going on. Not to say that's not happening in Cowboy Bebop 2, but you, you get my drift. Speaking of. There is a third party company that is doing this. They are taking the car from initial D and they are making IDW drift out of it because drifting memes. That stupid song. 
that was in so many memes for so long. Can you imagine that? They would have to do what they did with Knight Rider. There would have to be a button on this car you could press that plays the song. Why would you have this car if it wasn't playing the song? Initial D isn't exactly the most popular anime in America, but at the same time, you know, you can sell a meme. You can sell memes anytime you want, you know? There are, there are, you know, there's SpongeBob figurines out there of him just getting out of the chair because that's the meme. The, you know, I have a Funko Pop set in the store right now that's the two Spider-Men pointing at each other. You know, how many, like, I've seen figurines of dead Yamcha. You can sell a meme. You can sell a meme. And, if, you know, and this one was all over the place for a while. Kind of like, admittedly, kind of would offset the fact that design-wise, style-wise, it's not the most interesting car in the world. Let's be honest about that. You want a more interesting vehicle? Uh, the Yamato from Space Battleship Yamato. This one is another cool one. This is where everyone screams, if we had a broadside, we could do this. And you know what? I absolutely agree. I would also argue it wouldn't look very different. Because here's the secret. Here's the thing. It's very likely that G1 Broadside's design, at least his like in original and his like his color scheme in vehicle mode, was absolutely intended to be a spaceship, uh, like a you know a, a, a space battleship Yamato homage, because that's basically what he is. He's gray and red on the underside. That's Broadside. I think even the original prototype design that had blue mixed in still made sure that the battleship itself was, I guess, an aircraft carrier, point being, the ship, you know, the boat itself was gray top, red bottom. So I, I don't think that's accidental. So that is, again, another like, you know, that's another one I think would be popular enough. We can start getting into more niche stuff because I will admit I started to run low. Like I know I'm I shouldn't be running low on like really important vehicles in anime. I'm just starting to pick into ones that I would personally like, like the Vespa from F you know from Fooly Cooly. Uh I could actually see this turning into Conti, by the way. If you had like the TV head is making like a big chunk of the back of the Vespa, and then uh the front panel of the Vespa turned into like the front of his legs. You could start getting the engineering working there. You could actually make that a thing. Uh, there's even precedent for it running on its own, because that's the outro of the original anime, was just like a stop-motion thing of, like, the Vespa running off on its own. So you could even pretend like that's kind of the point. Um, let's go back to Dragon Ball again, because, again, if we're going to do this, there are major animes we have to cover. You know, and Dragon Ball is going to be one of those where if you do a collaborative with Transformers, it's absolutely going to sell no matter what. And I have to go vehicles for this because I'm kind of worried about what happens if we try to get uh, Dragon Ball hair to transform. Um, if we look at the show, there's tons of vehicles from the Capsule Corporation that would be, you know, prime options to actually make for Transformers. Weirdly enough, if you actually made this particular vehicle, it would probably be a pre-tool or, a, or, you know, depending on time frame, retool of an animated lug, a lug nut. <laughs> Can you see that now that I've mentioned it? I mean, again, this is not what I would think would be done because, you know, it, it appeared for a few times. It appeared a few times. I think, you know, it's, it's somewhere in the Cell Saga. But I don't really see, like, any of the capsule vehicles. Like, none of the vehicles stuck around long enough to really be, like, iconic of the franchise. You know, there's there's hover bikes and little compact cars. You know, the car that, you know, uh, that Goku blew up with his first Kamehameha. So, uh, that, there are options, but it's fleeting. You know, if you're going to get an iconic vehicle, then you need something like Frieza Spaceship turning, you know, that you can remold from Cosmos. That would be something, and I just thought of that on the spot, or else I would have a photo showing the option. No, you know what I thought of beforehand and actually put in the photo list? The Space Pod. The Saiyan Space Pod 
that it would actually transform into Vegeta. And then you'd retool it into Raditz. You know, obviously you would. You wouldn't be able to do it with Nappa. He's too big. You'd have to make a completely new mold for Nappa. But this would work. A space pod that actually transforms into Vegeta. You could make that happen. That would work. It contradicts what I just said about Saiyan hair having to transform. But hey, my list, my rules. If we want to go into the most famous vehicles again, though, uh, we're talking things like the Mach 5. Here's an easy blur retool. Give me a blur toy, and this is a retool of it. You know, that is, a, that is like an absolutely easy one to go for. Um, I don't know how much... I mean, it's, it's classic... It's well known, but I don't know if Speed Racer exactly has the fandom these days to actually go, yeah, I'm going to buy a Transformer of it. Potentially. Sell well in Japan, I know that. Uh, not sure about the US. Uh, the live action movie I know a lot of people love, but uh, didn't do well in the box office, so I don't know. I don't know about that one. I'll give you the easy one. How about the easy one? Because we've got a mold that's specifically designed based on it that we can retool it into. The white base from Gundam. Yes, the white base is basically the prototype for the Fortress Maximus flight mode. Uh, and that would be a really easy retool for them to do. I, I would normally never ask for a collaborative toy to be a $200 Titan. But that toy in particular, I think you could get away with because Gundam fans are nuts. And to have a gigantic white base, something that's actually large enough for actual Gundam figures to, like, be stored inside, potentially little transforming Gundam figures, like, you know, like Scout class, I could absolutely see this being done. Absolutely see this being done. I'd even keep the base mode because, you know, that could just be a space station, or it could just be, like, like a little lunar base, or whatever your imagination would, would make of it, you know, so you could still have that play pattern as well does bring up like if you're just gonna if you're gonna do why not why do white base when you could just make a transformer out of the rx-78 gundam so this brings up a completely different realm which is character based so character based stuff would have to work the way that a lot of the other uh that a lot of that some of the collaboratives have done where you're basically you have to make up the vehicle mode and you're buying it because of, you know, whatever the robot mode is. So, in this sense, you know, if you don't turn, you know, the RX-78-2 into an Optimus Prime mold, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not doing it right. Like, it, you, you would absolutely have to make it an Optimus Prime. I would think it'd have to turn into a truck. And that's one that I think repaints have been, like, kit bashers and repaint artists have been doing for years is swapping those two does bring into other characters and we go into more classic realms how do you do a sailor moon for instance um now again we have plenty of female bots my first thought would be like windblade especially if you wanted to do like the eternal sailor moon design with the wings that would actually make sense and be a very like fluttery light looking uh you know jet vehicle i think you'd ha it would be rc though granted I don't know what you do with the hair. <laughs> the problem doing a Sailor Moon Transformer is where does the hair go? What do you do with the hair? Um, I figured it would almost have to be extra accessories, right? Like you'd have, you'd have to like take them like on in vehicle mode. <laughs> How funny would it be to have like a Sailor Moon Transformer where the hair pieces, like the super long hair pieces were like, like jet engine effect parts <laughs> you just plug them into the back like they're speed lines oh my god you'd have to come up with something clever like that though because that would be a very difficult detail to work in yeah that's the that's the problem with dragon ball as well is like the hair is so unique what do you do with it you know you, the toy would at the very least have to be big enough to pack it away uh, that's why Vegeta works and Goku doesn't, unless they're all Super Saiyan and everyone's hair is up, spiky, where we can maybe potentially hide it somewhere. Uh, what about other characters? Like, we're, we're going, I'm going into a lot of classic ones, but that's because, frankly, I'm having trouble figuring out what to do with modern popular animes, you know? 
I don't know what to do with the cast of Demon Slayer for a Transformer. I don't really know what to do with the cast of My Hero Academia as Transformers. But that said, I am looking at the animated mold and going like, that's, that's All Might. <laughs> that body physique is absolutely All Might. <laughs> you cannot deny that. I could see that happening. I could absolutely see that happening. But then again, that, that means... Admittedly, it's because I'm unfamiliar with modern anime. I haven't had the time to watch in a long time, which means I'm kind of out of the loop. And then I look at things like, what, how do I do Saitama? What, what would Saitama even transform into that would actually convey the whole one punch gimmick? You know, it, you know, that's where it starts like baffling me. And I start going, well, maybe I don't have the brain for this after all. I'm mostly doing this video to just kind of show that like now we have a huge new possibility when it comes to Transformers Collaborative. And it's an exciting one because it goes into a lot of realms we have never explored before. So there's plenty to speculate on. There is plenty to go off of. Please let me know in the comments below what you would want for a collaborative. Uh, I know a lot of you are more up on anime these days than I am. So I'm sure there's plenty of options I am not uh, looking through right now. But that's just a quick sampling just to kind of get the brain percolating a little bit. And I will leave it at that. So as usual, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.